Mm -hmm. Guru. I'm Jax and today we're going to take a look at the next question in our New Year New Way series. Have you learned anything of value today? Well, you could actually ask yourself that question every day, but since it became the question um, of a topic, then I thought, okay, what do we talk about when we learn something of value and what it means to learn something? <laughs> I have my meow. She wants to come at this time and say hello. Okay. There is a, a Buddhist proverb that says, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I have been a thirsty student, and I still am. Um, I love to learn new ways and emotional healing and emotional mastery so that we can become free of the ties that bind us. And I have partaken in many, many workshops and online courses and modalities and such to try and work through the things that hold me back emotionally. There's something that very special that goes on at a workshop when people are there to face themselves and they want to they want to learn on how to how to overcome them their past and the mindsets and philosophies that keep them captive. And you can be, you can connect with such amazing people when you're there, because you have a sense of vulnerability and openness, and you're able to share on a level that you don't normally share with people at work, or even sometimes with your family, because you just don't connect that deep with anyone. But there was something that really bothered me in regards to this experience, and that was that We would have such an emotional experience and such elation and such cleansing, I would think. But it turned into something like a rock concert where it became such an emotional great time and you bought the t-shirt and you've been there and done that. And then days later, there was no transformation. They were just the same people with an emotional recollection of an event. A positive one, I suppose, which was better, but there was no life change and it really bothered me because I was like, how could you not be changed by what you learned there? I was listening to a seminar one time and he was talking about how, um, how he was saying there was this person that became a workshop junkie and he'd go for workshop after workshop after workshop and the guy would say, well, have you put into anything into practice of what you're learning? And the guy would go, oh, no, I'm just learning. And I found that... That was true for the case for most of the people that went there. They went there to have the experience. They went there to hear about the information, but they didn't go there to learn the information. And in order to learn it, you don't really learn how to do something until you do it and struggle through it and stumble through it. And if you want to look at it and fail through it, if you want to use that word. So I was blessed by being in a relationship with a person who was illiterate and that is an, an incredible dynamic and you don't realize how people are affected if they can't read or write until you're around someone that doesn't. And what gave me the clue is how we, I was talking to him one time about going and getting a CD to listen to and I sat there and went, well, go get the one. And I was listening to Elvis at that time. I enjoy Elvis. And I asked him to go get the Elvis CD. And the CDs were stacked with the, the skinny part where the name is there. And they were listed that way. And he stood there frozen for like, what, five minutes? And there was 20 CDs there. So it wasn't that big of a thing to figure out. But he stood there for 20 minutes looking at it. And it dawned on me that he wasn't reading the CD, he was looking for the picture because when you're literate, that's what you do. You don't read. You actually look for ways of recognition that are outside of that pictures um, or um, landmarks or whatever. So Yvonne had a story where <clears throat> back in, he was raised, he was born in 1938. So he was a lot older than I was and came from a different generation and time. When his father was killed when he was one, he was an electrician that used to work on telephone poles and there was a power surge and it burned his dad to a crisp right there on the power with the power. And unfortunately at that time there was there wasn't like foster care or that kind of system into place now. He was actually placed in a in a orphanage. Now this was a different kind of orphanage because it was he was allowed to um, visit his parents, so he wasn't like 
taken out and put into foster care or adopted or anything like that. So his mom did have some limited um, time with him, but he was one of seven children. So his mom couldn't support herself at that time because she was basically a mom that stayed home. The unfortunate part was is that um, Yvonne was from Montreal and he was in the French part of Montreal and the orphanage was in English part and he wasn't treated very well being French and they they didn't understand him and he didn't understand them and it was a very difficult time for him finally he had enough in about grade three and he left school altogether now if you're thinking about grade three he's what about eight or nine years of age and he decided then and there he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna go through school and he left without learning how to read or write so he lived his life and nobody knew that he couldn't read or write and he was a, he was a brilliant man actually and he learned how to do things and navigate and he became a long haul truck driver and if you think about that he had to get directions and drive through cities and he didn't know street names or anything like that and he has some amazing stories of how he was given miracles of how to find his way around. It was just... It was unbelievable on how the universe provided for him. <clears throat> Needless to say, at the age of 53, he realized that his illiteracy was having was holding him back. So he decided to go back <clears throat> to school and learn how to read or write. So he stopped working for about 10 months, I suppose, and finally forced himself to learn how to read at a grade 10 level. His brain was so saturated with learning, he decided, that's it, I'm done. I'm going to go back. So when I met him at 61... He did have the ability to read or write, but he actually didn't practice it. So I always equated it to like, I took the language of French in high school for three years, but I never used it. It just become head knowledge. It didn't become any kind of practical use because I didn't con have any conversations with anyone who was French. I didn't go to Paris or Quebec or anywhere like that, that would force me to use it and become practical and actually le learn how to make it a some kind of value in my life. It was just head knowledge that I could say, yeah, I took French and sometimes I could look at a word and know what it meant, but really it was some more information that I had in my brain that I learned and never had any access to or use for. So when, when Yvonne went to look for that CD, I realized that his patterning and his habit was to still be illiterate first and then be a reader second. So when I came to him and I said, you weren't looking, what, I went to the CD and I grabbed the face because on the face of the CD was Elvis's face. So he would look at it. I looked at it and I said, looking for this? And he got this sheepish like boy caught his hand in the cookie jar. And I went, you got to learn to like read every day, Yvonne. You got to read, not just use it as a last, last case resort. One time, we were looking for something, we were on a drive, and I couldn't find the sign for the garbage. And he looks at me, he goes, read the sign, Jax. And I'm like, oh, so teacher, watch it, because the student will appear. Well, there was my teacher to make sure that you're always using what your tools you have and to remain humble. So I was thinking about that. Have you learned anything of value? And the key in there was not necessarily a value because I believe we're presented with valuable things every single day. But it's whether or not we want to learn them. And learn them is not only sit there and go read about it or think it's great because you have this information. Learn is actually make it part of your daily routine. And so when I was at the workshops, that was the thing that really bothered me is most of the people did it like a rock star rock concert. Oh, this is so awesome all oh, these this was such great information the only issue was that when they came back they talked with such authority on how awesome it was and talked with other people in their lives about how you're doing a b c or d or how this is happening and i'd learned about this in the seminar no you didn't learn about it you heard about it because if you learned about it, you would be living it in your present day life. They wouldn't actually have to ask you about it because they could see that you were living it. You were actually walking your talk. So when the question came up and it said, did you learn of anything of value? It was a real checkup from the neck up for me. 
Am I actually learning? Am I practicing what I'm preaching? Because if I'm sitting here doing these videos and talking to you about it, it basically is garbage unless it's something in my life where I can show you an application of how I applied this, how I possibly struggled through it, how I've had difficulty mastering or how I'm, or the way I did master it, that I have life examples on how to share this with you instead of talking the talk. Frankly, I'm really tired of talking the talk and, and that's where hypocrisy comes in. And you know what? We do people a disservice of the message because they only see the hypocrisy. They don't see the message. So that's all for today, folks. Thank you for joining us and for watching. If you want to find out new and exciting ways to connect with the Common Guru, just check down below in our description box. Otherwise, have a fantastic day. Take care. Bye.